Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to talk about energy. The magnetic field can store some sort of energy. We talked about having energy stored at the magnetic field, at the electric field of course, magnetic field. Now we make the counterpart in the in the uh, in the magnetic field. We already talked about energy, energy density and so on. But last time we talked about a coil. Today we want to calculate the energy in a coil. So how much energy can be stored in a coil? In the electric field we did this with a capacitor. Today, magnetic field, we have a look at a coil. So this is again our findings at the coil. Uh, summed up from last time. So we have our Durchflutung, our flush, uh, magnetic flush, which is N multiplied by I. Yeah? Magnetomotive force, yeah? and this is H multiplied by L because we said, okay, the, the, the uh, magnetic field is concentrating itself inside the coil and outside the coil. It, the upper part and the lower part are labeling each other. They are uh, eliminating each other. And here we have the flux linkage, yeah? which is N multiplied by the flux. So N times I go because we have n windings, n times the flux is passing through through the coil, so this is the flux linkage, and this is the inductance multiplied by the current. Yeah, and the inductance can be calculated by n squared multiplied by mu a divided by l. That was our, were our findings. Yeah? And then we know uh, our, our uh, energy density yeah, in the magnetic field was one half multiplied by b multiplied by h. So our completely stored energy here yeah, is one half multiplied by b multiplied by h multiplied by the volume. Okay, so the volume of our magnetic field this would be that. Again, if we do not consider the stray field outside. All right. So let's calculate this. Wm, one half, and now instead of b, I write mu multiplied by h, multiplied by h, so squared, multiplied by the volume v. Mm -hmm. Good. So this equals one half mu. Uh, and now uh, let's have a look what is h squared if we take this here into account. Yeah? So we have h, h is, maybe I note this here, a side note, yeah? h equals n multiplied by i divided by l uh, from this formula here n multiplied by i divided by l is h. So we have here n squared i squared divided by l squared multiplied by v. Okay. And now what is the volume? What is the volume? The volume equals the area a multiplied by the length. I will note this now. One half mu n squared i squared divided by l squared multiplied by a multiplied by l. <laughs> this is this is the volume. And so we can get rid of one l here. Zack, zack. This is gone. So where we are ending up, one half mu n squared i squared divided by l multiplied by a. And now I do a little change yeah, because it doesn't really matter in which order I multiply yeah, one half. Then I say n squared. 
above, I write now this mu multiplied by a. I can do that, divided by l, and here what is still missing is this i squared. Why I've done this? Because have a look at this. Yeah. L. Haha. <laughs> yeah. So we're ending up at one half L I squared. Yeah. This is L I squared half. This is the magnetic energy, the energy stored in the magnetic field inside a coil. The inductance multiplied by I squared divided half. Okay, looks reasonable, right? But what about it's we only considered this inside inside our, our coil because we said okay, the stray field we don't take account into account our stray field, so uh, but we know there is a stray field, right? Because here there is not compensating each other, so here we must we, we there must be a stray field, yeah. And so we really have to doubt if this is really the energy we can store inside there. Huh? So let's make, let's try to calculate this with our stray field without knowing how the stray field exactly looks like. So we say our energy in the magnetic field now, huh? starting here, is our energy inside the coil, our main field, huh? this is, would be that, huh? plus our energy our in the stray field, outside. Huh? So this is the, this is main, and this is stray, the stray field. Hmm? And then, of course, we could write the first one is one half B1 multiplied by H1 multiplied by V1, which are the values inside our coil, yeah, plus one half B2 flux density outside in our stray field multiplied by H2. Yeah, magnetic field strength in our straight field, and multiplied by V2, the volume of our stray field, without really knowing how, how this looks like. Okay? So actually, I can make it now the, the, the same like I've did here. Yeah? So we have one half, B1, H1, multiplied by A1 and L1. Yeah? This would be exactly that. Yeah? And then I do the same for the stray field. Say, okay, I have some other area and some other length. And now let's have a look at the magnetic flux, our phi, uh, equals B1 multiplied by A1. Okay, this is our phi which is going in this direction inside our coil. We have a flux density, we have an area, and those multiplied is the magnetic flux. And because of, of, the, of the law that the, the, there, is no, it, there is no there is no source and no, no destination, no it must that the same flux which is going out here must come back in the stray field. Yeah? So this is exactly the same as B2 multiplied by A2, because the flux cannot change, because it cannot disappear, yeah? because we have a vortex field, we have no sources inside there. Huh? Okay, these are taken into account now, and I can write my Wm equals one half, and now I write phi, yeah? multiplied by H1, multiplied by L1, plus one half, and again B2, A2 is again the phi, yeah? multiplied by H2, multiplied by L2. Uh, so, this I make a bracket now,
I really have to look into. I always try to find the English word for herausheben. Yeah? Here in German we call it herausheben. We put it out. I have to look it up afterwards. So I will make it and hopefully I will remember. Okay. What we have here. Yeah? Please remember yeah, that we said our Durchflutung, our complete magnetomotive force, our flush, yeah, equals the sum of all HI multiplied by LIs. This is that. Yeah? Look at that. So this actually is our Durchflutung theta. Yeah? So, we can write here, it's one half phi multiplied by theta. And theta is n multiplied by i. So we have here one half phi n multiplied by i. And here, this is our link flux linkage. This is our flux linkage. Yeah? So it is one half phi b multiplied by i, and this is one half phi b is n is l multiplied by i, l multiplied by i. Multiplied by i squared. Ho ho! L i squared half. It is the same energy stored inside our coil. Yeah. Regardless if we take into account the stray field or not. So that is really the energy which is stored inside a coil. So this is, this, that's it. Yeah? This is the energy I can use, or store, or or get out again, or... Huh? How to store, how to get out, how this is happening, yeah? We will discuss in, in next, in next um, videos, because there is something we need to consider. This is called induction. Right? The law of induction is the topic of our next video. So, because... We are dealing here with, with changing magnetic fields. Yeah? Because when, when, when the current through a coil is changing, the magnetic field is changing. And this is causing something. What is caused? Next video, Law of Induction. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.